Welcome to lecture three in the accounting lecture series. In this lecture, we will create a balance sheet for week two of business. This lecture is based on the book, The Accounting Game, written by Daryl Mulis and Judith Orloff. Let's review the ending balance sheet for week one. At the end of week one, you had $13 in cash and $2 worth of finished lemonade. This brings total assets to $15. In the owner's equity area, the balance sheet reflects your $5 original investment and $10 in earnings week to date. Our liabilities were zero. This brings total liabilities and owner's equity to $15. We are in balance. How do we turn our ending balance sheet for week one into a beginning balance sheet for week two? We will roll up earnings and put them in a new category that we will call retained earnings. We will reset earnings week to date to zero because you haven't made any profits yet in week two. What can you possibly do with your retained earnings? Feel free to pause the video so you can try to answer this question yourself. The correct answer is D. Retained earnings can either be retained in the business to allow for a liquidity cushion or to invest in the business, or they can be distributed to the owners of the company in the form of a dividend. You have decided that you want to grow your business. In order to grow your business, you need more than the $13 in cash that you have. However, you feel that real business people do not borrow money from mom and dad. So you decide to go to a real bank. You convince the banker to loan you $50 in cash. How does this bank loan of $50 affect the balance sheet? You can pause the video and try to figure this out for yourself first. You received $50 in cash, so your cash will go up from $13 to $63. Taking into account the remaining inventory of $2, this brings your total assets to $65. You also have to add the loan under the liabilities, under notes payable. This brings your total liabilities to $50. Owner's equity remains at $15, bringing total liabilities plus owner's equity to $65. We are in balance. It looks like it might rain, so you decide you will not sell lemonade today. However, you are concerned that your $2 of lemonade inventory that you made last week might not last another day. So you sell your remaining inventory to your best friend for $2. You sell your remaining inventory to your best friend for $2. What has changed? Feel free to pause the video to try to answer this question by yourself first. Inventory went down from $2 to zero and $2 was added to cash. Your earnings were not affected because the cost of goods sold equaled your sales revenue so your gross profit for the leftover lemonade was zero. You go back to the grocery store and buy 10 pounds of sugar at 40 cents per pound. Your total cost for the sugar is $4. You know that cash is valuable, so you convince the owner to let you buy the goods on credit. You sign a piece of paper which says you owe him $4. What has changed on the balance sheet now that you have bought $4 worth of sugar on credit? Please try to answer this question yourself first by pausing the video lecture. Inventory has gone up from zero to four dollars. This brings total assets to sixty-nine dollars. You also have a liability because you still have to pay the grocer four dollars in the future. What should we call this liability? We call it accounts payable. We have added a new category that we named accounts payable under liabilities to reflect your $4 credit at the grocery store. How are accounts payable and notes payable different? Accounts payable give you goods or services. It is usually a short-term liability and a benefit for which you are charged no interest unless you don't settle your debt timely. Notes payable give you cash, usually for a long term and you owe interest in order to use the cash involved. You also buy $20 worth of lemons for which you pay in cash. How should the balance sheet reflect this $20 purchase of lemons? You can pause the video to try to answer this question yourself first. Cash went down by $20 to $45.
Inventory went up with $20 to $24. The changes are internal to the assets column. Total assets and total liabilities plus owner's equity remain at $69. You make a new batch of 60 glasses with half of your lemons and half of the sugar. Remember, you have a total of 100 lemons and 10 pounds of sugar. You use 50 lemons that cost 20 cents a piece and 5 pounds of sugar that cost 40 cents per pound. You would prefer to go biking with your friends instead of making 60 glasses of lemonade, but you also really want to do business today. You ask your sister if she can make the lemonade. She says she'll do it, but she'll charge you $1 for labor. What has changed on the balance sheet? You have a new batch of 60 glasses of lemonade that was made using 50 lemons and 5 pounds of sugar. Your sister charged $1 for labor to make the lemonade. Please pause the lecture and think about which changes you think we need to make to the balance sheet. To distinguish between the remaining lemons and sugar and the lemonade that was already prepared, we split the inventory category into two different sections, raw materials and finished goods. You used half of your raw materials, $10 worth of lemons and $2 worth of sugar, to make 60 glasses. Then why does the balance sheet reflect $13 worth of finished goods? Please pause the lecture to think about this. Remember, your sister also charged you $1 for labor. You used your cash to pay for this $1. The value of your sister's labor is tied up in the finished goods inventory. It cannot be seen separate from it. It is therefore part of the cost of goods manufactured. So we value the finished goods inventory as $12 worth of goods and $1 worth of labor. $13 in total. You can finally start to sell lemonade again. Some of your friends did not bring money, but they were thirsty. They promised they would pay you later. You agreed to this arrangement. At the end of the day, you sold all 60 glasses for 50 cents per glass. 40 glasses were bought for cash and 20 glasses were bought on account by your friends. How high were your sales in dollars? You receive $20 in cash and $10 on account. What has changed on the balance sheet? You can pause the lecture and try to make the adjustments yourself first. You receive $20 in cash, so cash went up from $44 to $64. You sold 20 glasses worth $10 on account. Where should that go? We need to create a new category called accounts receivable to reflect sales that happened for which we still have to receive cash. What else should change? Please pause the lecture to think about this if you are not sure. Your finished goods were all sold, so finished goods should go down from $13 to $0, and the value of the total inventory should go down from $25 to $12. This increases assets with $20 in cash and $10 in accounts receivable, and decreases assets with $13 less in finished goods. The net increase in total assets is $17. We are not in balance. What else do we have to change? Please pause the lecture to think about this if you are not sure. Your sales of $30 minus your cost of goods sold of $13 reflects a gross profit of $17, and we should add it to earnings week to date under owner's equity. Here is the new balance sheet. Cash went up from $44 to $64. Finished goods went down from $13 to zero, and inventory went down from 25 to 12. Earnings week to date went up from zero to 17. We are in balance. The phone rings with bad news. Your friend tells you that Johnny, who bought eight glasses of lemonade on account, moved away. That will take a serious bite out of your profits. What would you call this kind of loss? This kind of loss is called a bad debt expense. How high is your bad debt expense? Eight glasses times 50 cents per glass equals $4. What do we have to change on our balance sheet? You sustained a bad debt expense of $4. Please pause the lecture video and think about how the balance sheet should change. The eight glasses that Johnny bought were accounted for under accounts receivable, so you should reduce that from $10 to $6. What else is affected? Earnings. Earnings will need to be reduced from 17 to 13. This brings the balance sheet back in balance. Here's what the balance sheet should look like now. 
Accounts receivable was reduced from $10 to $6, and earnings week to date was reduced from $17 to $13. The totals of the balance sheet columns were both reduced to $82 from $86. Sobered by this bad debt experience, you decide you want to repay $25 of your bank loan. The banker wants you to pay $2 in interest. You decide to move ahead. You repay $25 of your loan, including an interest charge of $2. How does this affect the balance sheet? Please pause the lecture and try to decide which areas of the balance sheet are affected and how. In order to repay the loan and the interest, you had to use $27 of your cash. So cash will be reduced from $64 to $37. Notes payable also needs to be updated to reflect that half of the loan principal was paid off. So we change that from 50 to 25. What is the last thing to be affected? Earnings. Because the interest is an expense of doing business. Earnings are reduced with $2 from $13 to $11. As you can see, cash was reduced from 64 to 37, notes payable was reduced from 50 to 25, and earnings week to day was reduced from 13 to $11. Your neighbors have become quite concerned with all the kids on the sidewalk and their skateboards and hoverboards, that something might happen and they might be sued. They ask you to buy an insurance policy. You call an insurance agent who offers you a three-year policy, which costs $3 payable in advance. What has changed on the balance sheet when you decided to purchase a three-year insurance policy, which costs you $3 payable in advance? Please pause the video lecture and figure out how the balance sheet should change to reflect this purchase. Since this insurance policy has to be paid in advance for three years, but you only use the current year's insurance policy, you are paying for expenses now that will provide you with value in the future. We call this a prepaid expense. You are only using the first year of insurance policy right now, so you will expense $1 of the total insurance policy this year. This reduces your earnings from $11 to $10. You paid for the entire policy using cash, so cash went down from $37 to $34. And we added the $2 worth of prepaid insurance that you are not currently using as a prepaid expense in the assets column. Let's try to build another income statement. You can print an empty income statement that looks like this by going to Google Drive and looking for the income statement document. I strongly recommend you try to build it yourself before moving on, so you can discover where you struggle. You can use the next slide, which has an overview of everything that happened in week two, to try to fill the blanks of the income statement template. Here is an overview of everything that happened in week two. Let's go over these items one by one and see whether they are relevant to the income statement and how they affect the income statement. The first item is that your ending inventory of last week was two dollars. How does your ending inventory of two dollars of last week affect your income statement for this week? It is now your beginning inventory. So we add two dollars in the blank next to beginning inventory. You also went to the bank and managed to get a fifty dollar loan. How does this fifty dollar loan affect the income statement? Please pause the video lecture and try to answer the question for yourself. The loan itself does not affect the income statement because it is not something you earned through sales. It is also not considered an expense of doing business. The next item is the sale of your old inventory for $2. It also costs you $2 to make that inventory. We will put $2 in sales to reflect selling the $2 in lemonade. As of now, your gross profit for week two is zero because you sold the inventory at a price that only allowed you to cover the cost of goods sold. You then went to the store and bought 10 pounds of sugar for $4 on account and 100 lemons for $20 in cash. How does the purchase of sugar for $4 on account and lemons for $20 in cash affect the income statement? Pause the video and try to decide which changes you should make to the income statement. The purchase of sugar for $4 on account and lemons for $20 in cash should all go under purchases. Whether or not you paid in cash does not matter for the income statement. What matters is that you acquired the lemons and the sugar. When you actually pay for them is irrelevant. The $24 in purchases brings a total available for sale this week to $26.
$2 of which you sold earlier on. Your sister charged you $1 for labor to make the lemonade. How does it affect the income statement? Please pause the video lecture to figure out how the $1 labor charge affects the income statement. The $1 labor charge gets added under inventory because it is a cost related to manufacturing your goods. The value of the labor is tied up into the finished goods, the batch of lemonade that your sister made, and it should not be expensed until we sell that batch of lemonade. This brings the value of total available for sale up to $27. You next went out to sell lemonade. You sold the entire batch of 60 glasses. You received $20 in cash and $10 in accounts receivable. How does the sale of 60 glasses, for which you received $20 in cash and $10 in accounts receivable, affect your income statement? Please pause the lecture video and try to answer this yourself. You sold 60 glasses for which customers paid $30. Whether or not they paid in cash is irrelevant. The only thing that matters is whether or not the sale occurred. This brings the ending inventory down to $12. We sold our $2 in lemonade that we made last week as well as our entire fresh batch of lemonade, which cost us $12 in ingredients and $1 in labor to make. Therefore, our cost of goods sold was $2 plus $12 plus $1, which equals $15. This brings our gross profit to $32 in sales minus $15 in cost of goods sold, which equals $17. You then faced a bad debt expense. Of four dollars because your friend who drank eight glasses but did not pay cash moved away. The bad debt expense is considered an expense of doing business but it is not related to manufacturing the lemonade so it goes under expenses. You then repaid the bank half of the loan and the banker told you that you had to pay two dollars in interest. The cost of paying the loan principal is not reflected on the income statement. It is not an expense it was something that was given to you to use, and now that you no longer need it, you simply returned it. The net effect was zero. The interest expense, on the other hand, affects our income statement. But the interest cost is not related to manufacturing your lemonade, so it goes under expenses and not under cost of goods sold. Finally, you pay $3 for a three-year liability insurance. How will this affect the income statement? The need to have the insurance is a consequence of doing business, so it's definitely a business expense. But should we expense all three dollars? It wouldn't give us an accurate picture of the business if we expensed all three dollars now, because it would misrepresent your net profits for this accounting period by decreasing them with the total cost of the insurance. Therefore, we will only expense the first year of the insurance right now. The second one dollar will be expensed in your second year, and the final $1 will be expensed in the third year of operation. This finalizes our income statement. We had earlier calculated a gross profit of $17. When we take into account your expenses of $7, which include the bad debt expense, interest, and insurance, this leaves you with a net profit of $10 for week two. When we compare our balance sheet and our income statement for week two, we can see that our earnings week to date of $10 equal our net profit in the income statement. We also had $12 in inventory under assets left on our balance sheet, just like our ending inventory on the income statement. Do you know which method of accounting we have been using? It's called the accrual method. Do you know what the accrual method means? It means that we account for everything as it happens, as it accrues. The advantage of using the accrual method is that it creates an accurate measure of the company's financial position, independent of whether or not the cash has settled. This method became prominent when people stopped paying cash for everything. It is important to understand that the accrual method is not always consistent with when one pays a bill or receives cash. Can you think of any examples that illustrate this? We considered it a sale when your customers purchased a glass of lemonade on account. We counted goods under inventory even when you purchased those goods on credit. We have expensed your insurance in the year you use it, even though you paid for three years in advance. The accrual method recognizes money as it is earned, 
not as it is received. Accounts for purchases when they happen or when we owe them, not when we pay for them. Accounts for the insurance as it happens or as we use it. Which of these answers do you think accurately reflects the accrual accounting method? Please pause the lecture video to think about this. None of these reflect the accrual method. They reflect whether cash went in or out instead. This concludes the lecture on week two of our lemonade stand of the accounting lecture series.